Hello and welcome to our 2024 series of gardening videos. Today we're going to be starting seeds that need to be started anywhere from 6 to 10 weeks before our last frost date. Today is actually about 11 weeks before our last frost date, but we've had a very mild El Nino winter and I'm hoping we'll be able to transplant early. This year we're also testing out a new seed starting kit. Each tray has its own USB powered LED grow light in the cover. For the first batch of seeds, we're going to be starting some short season bell peppers. These are seeds from last year, and as you can see, there's not a whole lot left. This works out for us because we're still just testing out which varieties we actually enjoy eating um, to know whether we want to grow them again. Last year, they did not have enough of a growing season to ripen, so I'm starting them indoors earlier than I did last year. Next, we're starting a variety of tomatoes for fresh eating. The black cherry tomatoes I got for my daughter in particular. Um, the chocolate cherry tomatoes are from last year. And the forme de cour, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Those were free seeds we got with our order from Heritage Harvest Seeds. We're not after a lot of individual plants per variety, so I only planted a couple of seeds per cell. Depending on how the germination rate goes, I might be thinning by transplanting, but uh, four plants per variety would be more than enough for our needs. For the San Marzano tomatoes, I do actually want to have more individual plants since we want more tomatoes to make sauces and pastes and whatnot. There's not a lot of seeds in the packet. For these, I used a seed starting tray that has larger and deeper cells. I filled them only halfway so that as the tomato seedlings get bigger, I can top up the soil around them as a sort of potting up in place. If I do end up needing to thin any, um, I will thin by transplanting. However, there was only enough seeds to fill two rows with two seeds each and one row with one seed each. So we'll see what the germination rate is like for these. In previous years, we have tried direct sowing flower seeds for the pollinators um, in the spring and they have not succeeded for various reasons. So this time I'm going to try the butterfly flower, which is in the milkweed family, and see how that does. The instructions say to start them out in peat pots. I've had some issues with peat pots, so I'm starting them out in peat pellets instead. The San Marzano tomatoes are now on a heat mat inside our large aquarium greenhouse and I've put the uh, milkweed in there as well. Hopefully the lights themselves will keep things warm enough for them to germinate. The tomatoes and the peppers in their domed trays with their own individual lights are not over a heat mat but they are over a heat vent so I'm hoping that it will be warm enough for them. This room tends to stay at consistent 15 degrees Celsius all the time. I'm actually behind the ball when it comes to recording about our seed starts for this year. Uh, we did start some in February, but my computer died and we had all sorts of issues before I could get a new one. So here we are with our seed starts from February. These just got cleared out of the large aquarium greenhouse to make space for the San Marzano tomatoes. There are sweet chocolate bell peppers in here, uh, three cups with those. There's two cups with the uh, purple beauty bell peppers. Um, only one cup germinated, so I transplanted two into the other cup and we'll see how those do. I've got some German winter thyme that have started. I also tried starting some oregano and not a single one germinated, so I guess we won't be having oregano this year. In the trays at the top of the picture, we have yellow onions and shallots. In the tray below, there is one row of hot peppers and one row of little finger eggplants and one row of classic eggplants. And because of the poor lighting in the room, I've borrowed some of those LED lights from the new uh, grow kit that we have to provide a little extra light on the darker side of the room. Here we've got the red Weathersfield onions. Last year we tried growing these and the, they germinated great, had lots of transplants which promptly disappeared and I have no idea what happened. Uh, that entire bed did not do well. 
This year, we've started them indoors, and they're not doing as well as others. If they don't do well this year, I don't think we're going to try them again, but I'd really like to have at least a few survive this year. These are for our food forest area. Uh, they are Trader Mulberry, which is a cold climate variety of a mulberry. We actually got the seedlings last year, but they were really, really tiny, so I left them indoors and they went dormant over the winter and now they're just very enthusiastically growing. So I hope they will do well once we harden them off and then transplant them outside in the spring. And there we have our first seed starts for our 2024 garden. Thank you for watching.